Welcome to India Today So South. I'm Sara Fazil. The Modi-led NDA government's One Nation, One Election agenda has met heavy criticism on part of the Karnataka government led by Sidramaya, who have red flagged it for being unconstitutional. The Karnataka cabinet, led by Chief Minister Sidramaya, approved three resolutions on Monday night this week, amongst which One Nation, One Election was opposed, apart from the national eligibility come entrance test, NEET, and delimiting constituencies for the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies. So why is Karnataka government and the center sparring over One Nation, One Election? The One Nation, One Election agenda was a part of the BJP manifesto of 2019 and has been opposed by the opposition for violating constitutional provisions. The Karnataka Assembly session today had ministers of law and parliamentary affairs, HK Patel, and the medical education minister, Sharan Patel, criticizing the move to be undemocratic. Minister of Law and Parliamentary Affairs, H.K. Patel, cited that one nation, one election would only undermine state autonomy and also hinder the spirit of free and fair elections as enshrined in our constitution. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Mukta Matu Naya Samata Chinavani Tatu, E. Praja Pravutu, the Atma Wagide, Wandurashtra, Wandu Chinavani Prastau, Bartha Praja Satat Makamatu, Okutu, Apaya Nuntu Marta, Bere Bere Rajagala, Vidana Sabegalu, Avogaladia, the Adikara, Avogala, no Hundur Tabe, but to Ekuru Pachinavana, Vila Pratio, Rashtri, Vishagala. That was Minister of Law and Parliamentary Affairs, H.K. Patel, who spoke about how if one nation, one election is forcefully implemented by the BJP government, then that's going to just hinder the spirit of our democracy, which believes in fair, free and fair elections as enshrined in part 15 of the Constitution. Also, he went on to say that the state's autonomy will be undermined if this one nation, one election agenda is imposed. He says that therefore the central government must not implement this draconian policy to protect the democratic process and the union integrity of India. Moving forward, we also had the medical education minister, Sharan Patel, who spoke about the one nation, one election agenda and said that if this is implemented, then various things will be curtailed. The BJP's ulterior motive is doing this because every state has its own dynamics and they are trying to bulldoze democracy, is what he went on to say. Let's listen in to what he has to say. One election, 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 so so that was Sharan Patel, Medical Education Minister of Karnataka, who said that the BJP doesn't want elections as they only want governance and elections is a part of democracy. And that's why they want to curtail it. Now, Deputy Chief Minister DK Shiv Kumar also came out and spoke about the one nation, one election agenda and why the Karnataka cabinet has passed the resolution. He said that they are different phenomena and it's practically not possible to have such a agenda in our country. Let's listen in to what the Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shiv Kumar had to say about this. I think in this uh, India and Karnataka or any other part of the country, it is a different uh, phenomena. Uh, it can't be though there may be hurry, but uh, practically it will be not be possible. Uh, so we have moved a resolution on that. That was the Deputy Chief Minister who said that the reason they moved uh, a resolution against the One Nation, One Election is because it's not practical. Now, moving ahead as to why is the government pushing for the One Nation, One Election agenda? The One Nation, One Election agenda, we need to understand, has long been an election promise of the BJP since 2019. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has time and again advocated uh, about the implementation of this agenda to save time and money spent during the polls. 
the bjp even argued that holding the lok sabha and assembly elections together uh, you know would ensure that no money is wasted and also it would not interfere with the governance even in their 2014 lok sabha election manifesto the bjp uh, wrote that the bjp seeks through constitution consultation of other parties to evolve a method of holding assembly and lok sabha elections simultaneously apart from reducing election expenses for both political parties and the government this will ensure certain stability for state governments we will also look at revising the expenditure limits very very realistically now apart from this in the run up to the lok sabha elections this year a nine member high level panel which was headed by the former president ramnath kovind in march this year recommended amendments to the constitution to hold both the national and the regional polls together this panel's 18626 page report outlined a phased approach to synchronize elections starting with lok sabha and state assembly elections followed by local body elections within 100 days of the general polls now what is needed if one has to hold simultaneous polls holding joint polls requires constitutional amendments without state legislature endorsement for lok sabha as well as assembly elections synchronizing local body elections with general polls also requires ratification from at least half of india's 28 states common electoral polls and a single voter identity card would be used and five constitutional articles and the representation of peoples act will also have to be amended for the one nation one election bill to come into effect now you do let us know in the comment section that do you agree with this move of the government to introduce and implement the one nation one election agenda do you think it's right comment below and let us know and also don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell icon thank you so much for watching india today so south i'm sara fasil